Hi, this is Daryl Peterson with MicroMeasurements. I'm the manager of our Applications Engineering Department, and I'd like to take a few minutes and show you one of our newest three-element rosettes. Uh, you may recognize it. This is uh, a new version of our 250UR rectangular style rosette. This new version has the advanced sensors technology uh, built into the strain gauge. And what that means is that it's a new technology that we use for adjustment of the gauge. Uh, two main advantages of it. Number one is that the resistance tolerance of the, the grids is tighter than what it has been traditionally. And number two is we get a better matching from one gauge to the next with these new adjustment techniques. In a package of uh, five gauges will come in a, in a blue package. And just like before, when you look at this strain gauge, if you're familiar with the 250UR, you'll find this new 250URA is a drop-in replacement. Uh, the grids are oriented the same. The tab geometry is very, very similar. The overall footprint and construction of the gauge effectively is the same. The only thing that's changed is that resistance adjustment uh, technique. If I take the gauge and I rotate the package around to the back, I wanna show you the technical information that comes with these new strain gauges. So at the top, you'll see the resistance. This one is 350 ohms plus or minus 0.2%. And these strain gauges with that advanced sensors technology, uh, they have a tighter tolerance on the resistance as I mentioned before. Uh, also, you'll see the temperature coefficient of gauge factor. That's pretty typical for Constantan gauges at 1.5% per 100 degrees C. Then you'll have the gauge factor and we'll give you a separate gauge factor for each one of the grids and the tolerance on it is a half a percent, which is very typical for uh, the traditional strain gauges. Again, these are effectively a drop-in replacement. You'll see the transverse sensitivity, a little bit higher, a little bit lower than 1%, and then you'll see the thermal output coefficients. It's a fourth order polynomial, and you'll have the coefficients for degrees Fahrenheit and degrees C. And then you'll also see on the packaging here, the lot number, that's good for traceability. You might wanna document that and keep that in your paperwork. And then last but not least, you get down to the lower section. And with these new strain gauges, they'll have a new item code. So you may need to check your ERP system that you use for ordering and get that uh, item code updated in that ERP system. That's a unique identification just for this particular package and style and construction of strain gauge. Uh, the quantity in this package, just like before, is five pieces per pack. Uh, that's another manufacturing code for the gauge. Uh, you'll see this 2D barcode, and you could use a 2D uh, barcode scanner to import all the technical information that's found uh, on this package that comes with the gauges. And then last but not least, you'll see the part number. This one is a CEA-06-250URA-350. And that A that you see after the, the gauge pattern, the 250UR, when you see an A, it means it has the advanced sensors technology. So it's got that new adjustment technique uh, for the resistance. Now you might ask yourself, why would I use a strain gauge like one of these? It's a three element rosette. And the typical reason why you would use a three element rosette is that you're not sure of the principal strain magnitude or direction. So maybe you've got a structure that you're planning to test and you're not sure of which way to orient the strain gauge, consider using three element rosettes. Uh, one of the things you'll notice about the three element rosettes is that it, obviously it has three sensitive grids and with a rectangular style, it means the grids are at a 45 degree direction to each other. Also, if you look closely at it, you'll see that with the tabs facing down, it's typically numbered one, two, three from left to right. And when you go through the data reduction, you'll find that the reference axis for a three element rosette is always grid number one. And that's the grid that's all the way over here to the left. So typically we try to align grid number one in some direction that we can relate to on the structure. And that helps you to interpret the angle calculation uh, once you go through the equations. I've also got an example of one installed on a tube. <clears throat> Here you can see the three element rosette. These are the CEA series strain gauges have a little bit of flexibility to them. So you can put them on surfaces that are not flat. 
again, this one is grid one, the one in the middle is two, the one to the right is three. And you can uh, use this to solve for principal strains and direction. Sometimes you might also find that you're trying to uh, take a part like this tube and convert it into a transducer. Uh, we've actually got some technical information where you take two of these rosettes, you put one on the front and you put one on the back of the tube, 180 degrees opposite, and you wire the outside grids that are turned at the plus or minus 45, you wire those for torque, and the middle grids, you wire those for bending. So basically, you can, you can make quite easily a pretty simple transducer that could measure torque and it can measure bending in this tube using two of these three element rosettes. Again, the outside grids are for the torque measurement, the middle grids are for the bending measurement, the outside grids would construct a full bridge, and the middle grids would construct a half bridge for bending. But if you'd like to find out more about this 250 URA, please feel free to take a look at our website at www dot micro dash measurements dot com or if you have technical questions pick up the phone and call us uh, you can dial 919-365-3800 and follow the prompts till you get to applications engineering and we'd be happy to answer any questions you've got related to this three element rosette or any strain gauge in general thank you